Hi everyone, I'm Eric Bavishi and today I'm super excited to be presenting my first session at the Scottish Summit and I'll be talking about how to empower your sales team with the nearby customers powered app. Before we get on to the session, let's thank the sponsors for this event. Script Runner, DQ Global, Proximo3, Redspire, Agilisys and Hitachi Solutions, where I work as well. So I work as a senior consultant at Hitachi Solutions America. I am a business applications MVP and um, my brand is that API guy. So you'll see that on all my social media accounts. I have a YouTube channel, um, that API guy. Uh, my blog is that API guy tech. And I also started a podcast recently called rapid power. So check that out. So why do we want to do a nearby customers power app, right? So the first thing it's easy to find customers, right? Um, otherwise you have so many customers uh, within a certain region and it's not that easy to find using just a normal search. Uh, you spend a lot of time just searching for a customer otherwise. Prioritize customers now based on the customer information, like the number of orders placed or the amount of orders last year or something like that. Um, you should be able to easily prioritize the customers um, so that you can make the visits or reach them out accordingly. Quick access to recent info. So again, something on the map, you can easily see how to um, get some recent information about the customers, um, the sales data, other, uh, any other relevant information that would help the sales team in making a decision or kind of prioritizing that customer over another. And time saved. Um, if you know that these are the customers that you want to visit in a specific day, um, you can plan out your route and all those kind of stuff and you'll save time. And your sales team, if they are saving time, that means they are spending more time in selling the product and uh, talking with the customers. So that's more money for the, the company. So these are, I would say, as per my opinion, the top four reasons why you want to build a nearby customers power app. Uh, a few other things, if you have the like a national or a distributor or a customer who basically has the same name in different locations, it's hard to find which customer to go, I mean, to search for that customer in your database. So this helps you in finding, okay, if I'm at this location, this XYZ customers, this branch is this one. Otherwise the names are the same. When you search for it, it becomes difficult to find the correct one. So what will we build in this session? So we'll first build a flow to update the latitude and longitude values of all the existing customers based on their current addresses. We will also build a canvas app with the map control so that the one that you just saw on the previous screen. And then we'll also build a flow to update the latitude and longitude information for any new customers that get added to the database. Now, um, for this session, I'm using Dataverse or CDS um, as my database, but you could have any other database, SharePoint, SQL Server, um, or even Excel, which I don't recommend. <laughs> but uh, any database that you have, you could connect to it and build this app. So before I jump into the demo and building out these components, let's spend a few minutes on understanding the latitude and longitude. So I had to research a little bit about how latitudes and longitudes work. We all know every location has its own specific latitude and longitude. And um, that's how on the Google Maps, every map app works. So what are what am I using in the app, which makes it really simple to find nearby customers. So um, my kind of, <laughs> I would say, the, the philosophy was that a one degree difference in latitude or longitude 
represents around 69 miles as you can see here so and like so what i thought was okay i want to just get a radius of one, maybe 100 miles or something like that and two degrees of latitude and longitude should be good enough to cover a radius not exactly a circular radius but a, a kind of a square here as you see to, to kind of bound my um, area within and the reason why i did that is because it simplifies the math in the app you can do some complex math to get the exact kind of circular radius however you don't need that you just need to get like a square within which you can show all the locations all the customer locations which are within that latitude and longitude kind of square and that's it you can filter out your customers based on that and build your formula much more easily now we do use the Haverson formula which is to calculate the distance um, to show that for each customer uh, like how much the distance is approximately that involves some complex math but yeah i mean it's not necessary that you do that but it, it does help in, in for the sales team to understand um, okay this customer is approximately this much far away so let's jump onto the demo so here is my customer table you can see um, this is the table that i'm using to save all the customer information and let's look at the app itself so here's the app um, it's loaded already you can see uh, this is not my current location i kind of forcefully changed the location to a specific point in chicago and i made up some um, customer names tdg power addicts hq and you can see based on the current location it shows the distance from each of these and if i hover over this like let's say tdg or yeah so it shows me even the sales here to date and what type of customer it is. So it's a distributor customer and we have had thousand dollars of sale with them. I can zoom in. I can look at this customer as well. And I can see that, okay, I also have some information about the last order placed. And let's say if I want to look at this company V, now I'll have to kind of zoom in or zoom out here. But what I could do is I can just click on this kind of redirects or re uh, sizes the map and takes it to that company V's location, which is in Wisconsin. And similarly, I can see all these other locations. These are really far, but now in some, if there are a lot of customers within a, spe a small radius, this would be really helpful. So if I can click on this, it show me, okay, this customer is in New York. Um, so similarly, Again, let's come back to our original, which is TDG and Power Addicts HQ. So I have some options here to create an engagement report. Um, so let's look at that. I click on plus and say uh, new product launch visit. Can add some notes. And hit the check and that's it it created the engagement report so i could easily create that engagement report uh, with this customer um, and then if i want to start the navigation to this customer i can just click on this navigate button and it will open google maps now i'm on my desktop it shows me okay i actually live in dayton so it's showing me a long distance but if i was in chicago it will show me that distance um and if i have this open in my phone it will open up google maps and actually it will start the navigation as well so i just have to click one button to start the directions also i can see the last order placed so this shows me the the last order place details and kind of that's about it i mean so you can even zoom out here and look at the locations it clusters them you can do this a bit. Um, so yeah, you have a lot of options here to play around with the map control. But 
the basic stuff is I want to see the customers on the map so that I can easily see how far they are and then start my navigation to those customers and make a visit. So now that we have seen a demo of this app, let's jump on to creating first the flow that will populate the latitude and longitude information for all the existing customers. And then we will build the app from scratch as well. So this flow is going to start from a manual trigger because we are going to only run it once. And then I'm going to use the common area service. List records. Use the current environment. Search for the customers. And then the next step that you want to do is get the location or the latitude and longitude information based on the address. So I'm using the Bing Maps connector. So we're going to use this get location by address action. It asks me for all these five things. So I'll say address. Now, because it's um, an array of records, it automatically applies and apply to each loop. Um, city, state, postal code, country. And then as we have the latitude and longitude now, we will update the record with that information. Now, because I build this flow outside a solution, which I wouldn't recommend, um, you should always build sol flows within a solution so that you can move it across environments. But uh, just for simplicity, I use the common data service, the, I'd say the legacy connector and then I'm choosing the current environment. So again, we look up the customer's entity or table. And then the record identifier will be from this list records action. So we will just search for customer. So this is the unique identifier. That's the good for each record. And then if I click on show advanced options, it will give me all these fields. Um, so there is a latitude. Now I had multiple fields created for the same thing because I was doing some tests. However, whatever latitude, longitude fields you have um, for your customers or accounts table, you can populate those. The accounts table that kind of comes along standard with all the dataverse environments is or has address one latitude and address one longitude as the fields that you could use. So I'm going to say the point coordinates latitude and longitude will be from point coordinates longitude. So this is from the Bing Maps connector. So that's actually about it for this flow. Once you run this flow, it will automatically update all the customers with their, based on their address with the latitude and longitude information. Now, one step that you could add to this is a condition to check if the confidence, so there's a confidence So the values are high, medium, low. So if the confidence isn't high enough, you can maybe run through an up, through an approval or like a team's notification that you can send to an admin. 
um, to confirm whether look like the location that was returned is correct and then only update the record. So for a production purpose, I would recommend something like this so that you don't populate some wrong latitude or longitude information in your customer's um, table. So now that we have created the flow, let's jump on to creating the app. So we'll create a new canvas app with the phone layout. Let's connect to our data source first. So we'll say customers. Another field that I want to, another table that I want to add is the orders table. So that I can get the recent orders of that customer. And then let's first add a new gallery. So I'm going to add this blank gallery we'll connect it to customers and then let's change the layout of this gallery with these title subtitle and body okay so we have all the customers here now so let's bring it down a bit and let's add the map component to add that click on this plus sign over here search for a map and click on it so this loads up the map just make it a bit bigger and then now let's work on how do we show the customers within a specific region the before I do that, let me just get the current latitude and longitude information into a global variable. So I'm getting the latitude and longitude into these two variables. And now I will go to the gallery and add a filter formula here. So we first want to filter the customers. So if you remember when I showed you that square, right? So what we can do is based on the current location, uh, I'm okay with the radius or a distance of plus two minus two on the latitude and plus two minus two on the longitude. Now you probably don't want plus two on both. Um, like you're basically having a square of like four by four, which will be quite a big square. Uh, so if you don't want to do that, you can reduce it to one or 1.5, whichever based on your use case and let's do current or latitude is less than current latitude plus two and copy the same thing and just make changes to that so we need four conditions for defining the square. So we'll change this to latitude greater than current latitude minus two. And this one is longitude less than global current longitude. plus two and again longitude is greater than 
global current longitude minus two. Now it doesn't show anything because um, it's taking in the, the latitude information hasn't been loaded yet. So I will click on right click on app and run on start. So that will give me these two values. Now, again, it doesn't show anything because based on my current location, um, it doesn't have anything. Okay, so I had to make one change. Um, I had to change the latitude and longitude information um, because based on my current location, it doesn't give anything. So I changed it to a location as I showed it in the demo to uh, a point in Chicago. So these are the latitude and longitude information for that. And that gives me all these locations now. Um, so now I need to sort this by the distance. And that's where we will use the Haverson formula. Now to keep it simple for this session and not go through the whole thing, I will copy paste that formula and maybe spend a few seconds or a few minutes and explaining that. But I'm not a mad genius here. Somebody else helped me on this. And um, I'll just copy that and show you how to do that. So we we'll copy this whole thing. We might have to change some values there. This is And also we, I'm using the value of pi here and p. Okay, so I need to sort this. And let's see, just need a, another, close the filter formula here and change this and that's it. Um, so we have the list here sorted by the distance. Now it will show you a delegation error. However, generally I'm not going to show more than 500 in that or 2000 customers in that list. So this filter will anyways get it down to less than 2000 customers and then um, your so I mean, this shouldn't have an issue now. The reason why it's giving the delegation error is because of uh, this formula here and the sort being done on that formula. So if you already have less than 2000 in this collection, then you don't need to worry about that. So let's look at the formula. So it's, it's literally, I'm not a math genius here. So it's one to seven, four, two times the a sine of the square root of this kind of uh, 0.5 minus cos cosine value of this uh, difference between the current latitude and the latitude of the customer. Um, you're using this kind of variable p here, which I assigned a value in the app on start. And then again, I have this whole plus, all this whole formula, I'm not gonna go through that whole thing. But if you want to get much deeper into that, there is a page, the a Wikipedia page on that to kind of understand the whole formula um, for getting the distance between two points. So we can refer to this whole thing. And if you're really interested in the math, 
uh, otherwise just use this formula right away and it kind of approximates distance it's not of course the exact distance because the road could be <laughs> it will also give a distance between london and chicago so, so yeah this is a more of a distance uh, from a geographical standpoint um not an exact distance because that's all you need right to show the nearby locations um, so now that we have this list of customers we also want to uh, show the the distance here so we'll use that same formula so let me just copy that again um, from here So now I've copied the formula and you'll see the distances now. So it shows it in miles. Um, if you are using a, a metric system, you just need to change some um, the this number here or here. Um, just add a, I would say a division, I think it's 1.7 or something like that, or multiplication actually, because one mile is approximately 1.7 kilometers. Um, so just do that and uh, you will get that in kilometers. So we have got all the, the list of customers in this gallery. Now, if I want to show the same thing on the map, I will click on this um, control, click on advanced. I'll go to, uh, it is items latitudes so i'll say customers dot latitudes dot latitude and customers dot longitude now of course i am going my customers table doesn't have a lot of information so this works fine however you probably want to um, first put into a collection this filtered customers on the app start and then use that collection everywhere throughout the app um, and you can have a refresh page if the location is changing to have a refresh button so that people can refresh the map as well so it's still not showing because we don't have the labels identified so let's do that customers dot company so we added the latitudes longitudes and the labels but we are still not seeing the information because we haven't updated the items property of this so let's do this let's take this collection here the filtered collection and put that into the items property of this map and there you go you have these locations kind of showing up now now it does, it's not using a default location uh, and that's why it's kind of um, it's not using the current location as a default location so if you want to do that we'll just click on the map again um, say show current location and you can actually tell what the current location latitude is so this is where you will say global current latitude and global current longitude so now it's showing that and again if i want to use that as a default location as well so that it's centered around that location i'll say use default location and we'll change this default latitude we can the current latitude and then global current longitude and instead of a default zoom level of 16 we'll make it like 8 and if we make it 6 maybe it shows us a little bit more locations let's keep that 7 okay so this is where we were in the demo it shows the TDG the power acts HQ and uh, it shows the the gallery with that uh, customer names 
And if I want to add uh, the link to navigation, I just need to add another, let's add a button. Oops, not outside, but inside the gallery. And we'll say, if you didn't know, you can add emojis in these buttons. So we'll say map. Let's use maybe this. And we have this nice looking map icon inside the button. Of course, this doesn't look great. <laughs> Just wanted to show you that. And we'll choose action on select. And the, the URL for that, let me quickly grab that from here is there you go so you're using launch so that it opens the url and this url on the phone will open the map and uh, the google maps uh, app now if you want to give more options to your uh, sales team to either use google or Waze or Apple Maps, you'll have to look into how to create those URLs for each of those apps, but you could do that, it's possible. For Google Maps, this is the URL, you're typing the destination equals this, uh, travel mode is driving, and the direct actions or direction action is navigate. So there are two options on you either get directions or you get navigation. Um, so navigation starts the Google Maps uh, navigation directly rather than just showing the directions. So you can give all these options now. Here I'm showing the address, city and state. Of course, if you have a global presence, you probably want to add the country as well here. Um, so you have a lot of flexibility here and you can change it based on how you want to do it. So we'll just for demo purpose, click on plus, click on this, Okay, it took a second there, but uh, it's showing the directions now. And of course, as I told you, I live in Dayton, so it's showing it from De uh, Dayton to Chicago. So that's kind of everything in the app. Of course, this is not the best looking app here, but you can make it look like this with some more additions, uh, some better icons, and also if you want to show order details or any other details about the, the customer, you can show some more by accessing that in the gallery. Uh, one last thing which I didn't show was on the map that you can create info cards when you hover or click on the customer. And that option is under fields. So I click on edit. Oh, actually it should show a lot of things here. I think I've turned off the info card, so you have to turn on the info cards. And to turn on the info cards, you click on the show info cards. And if you want it on click or on hover, um, if you are using phone, it probably makes sense to do it on click because there's no on hover. And then I can add some fields here. So instead of showing the company name, which is already there, we'll add say the the type of the customer and then let's do sales here today and then i click on it it shows me that so now that we have built the app let's build the last part of this which is the flow that will add the latitude and longitude information for any new customer that gets added to the customer's database. So it's similar to this flow. However, um, it will trigger when a record is created. So I'm not gonna build this from scratch. I'm just gonna show you how it, it works here. So when a record is created under customers and you can choose the scope, if you want to do for all the customers, just choose organization. And then I'm doing a get record just so that I can, I mean, sometimes you don't get all the details in this. 
And also if you are getting it from, I don't know, your ERP that you're doing a sync um, to your customer's database in Dataverse, you probably want to add a D layer as well here. So sometimes the field doesn't get updated, like the latitude or the address fields won't get updated at the moment when the record is created. So you probably want to add a D layer of, I don't know, five minutes, 10 minutes, whatever you think makes sense. And then you get the record details so that you get that address information. You add a get location by address. And then as I told you, have a confidence check. So check if the confidence score is equal to high, then update the record. And if it's not high, then either send like an approval action so that you can look at the, the details um, of the customer that location that was returned and then approve it based on uh, what you see the results were. So that's the flow part. Um, and I think we have covered all the parts now. Now, one thing I just wanted to add was there's another session um, which just happened right before this uh, that was by Maplytics uh, from Enogic which has a full fledged um, routing and heat maps and all that kind of a lot of cool stuff. Now, if you have that kind of a sales team where you need to know like a lot of information, then yes, go for that. Uh, it's a, it's a, I would say a full fledged uh, app or tool which can work with dynamics or a model driven app and uh, gives you a lot more information than this um, on the map. But if you want to build something simple, your salespeople are just wanting to see which the nearby customers are so that they can kind of do their own thing then after that, right? They want to plan it out or they're not visiting so many customers in one day so they don't need a routing. You probably want to use something like this. Um, this helps them in like, this is one of the scenarios you, your sales team, uh, visit the customer and then either they are at the customer's location or they're just sitting in the parking lot after the visit and they're like, oh, instead of going back to my home or my hotel and entering the details in CRM, let me just do it right now, open up the app. The, that current customer location will show up right there in the parking lot. So click on that and then create this engagement report. So I have all the details added right then and there, rather than forgetting it after a while and then entering half or not half, but kind of a bit of less information than what I had fresh when I was at the customer. So those kind of use cases, if that's what we are, you're looking for, then this is the solution. If you wanna have much more advanced stuff on the map, go for something like Maplytics. So I do recommend checking that session out as well um, and learn from that session. So that's all that I had to show. And let's jump back to some of the resources that would be helpful. So if you want to open up a Bing's map kind of account, this is the place that you need to go to. You can set up a free developer account um, so that you can play around with it. But for production purpose, I would recommend using a business account and it doesn't cost a lot. So it it's definitely worth it. Harrison formula, as I showed you, you can look at this link and find out some more information. Um, the map component, uh, there's some amazing videos by my friend Reza Durrani on this. So check out his YouTube channel for that. Uh, but here's the official kind of blog post on how to use the map component. And I'll be posting the power app and flow files on my blog, whatever I used here. So you can, it will be in a solution so that you can just import the solution and um, build it or look it at yourself so that you can build your own. I would recommend using that same thing uh, because you always have some specific requirements if you want to just see how I build that app and what all I'm using the formulas, have a look at that. 
that's all for the session today thank you so much for um attending the scottish summit thank you so much for attending my session and there's a lot more to check out for so do check out other power platform and all the other amazing sessions by some great line of speakers so thank you again and have a great day